What's up, guys? Before we get into today's show, I want to remind everybody that you can get buckets first with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, and exclusive props. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and shoot your shot. FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. So this wasn't on the docket to start today, but we got some information. Cleveland.com put out the final numbers from the Flying Pilot J or Flying Company, or Pilot Company, excuse me, sale to Berkshire Hathaway Ooh. and Warren Buffett. The final number in totality for the sale, Earl, $13.65 billion for Wait Jimmy Haslam's fly, Flying Pilot J Ooh. Company. We've talked in depth on this show about the perspective of New Brown Stadium, how to fund it, how to pay for it. Your very first Ultimate 216 show talked about your thoughts on Jimmy Haslam and why he should pay for the stadium himself. Mm. Now that you have some financial numbers to back up, and we knew it was going to be in that <laughs> ballpark. That's not completely out of the blue. It's just a, a financial finality now, knowing the actual numbers. Mm -hmm. Does it change your opinion? Does it make you feel more strongly in what you thought about beforehand about Jimmy paying for the stadium? And when you see a number like 13 Point six five billion dollars. How do you, would you feel if he asked the city to pay for half a new stadium? Ooh, I need a minute. <laughs> I need a minute. Need so a first, first things first. Thirteen point six five billion. That's a whole lot of money. <laughs> but I guess I double down on my original stance of Jimmy Haslam should pay for it. And before anybody jump in here saying, well, you know, if the city wants any part of the shared revenue or whatever. They should pay for it, and that's cool. I respect that if you're a resident from the city of Cleveland. Mm -hmm. But if you're making $100,000 plus and you don't even live in the city of Cleveland, I have a hard time hearing you tell actual residents that's in the city to pay for it. But check this out. According to the article, and Steve, you could pull this up. This is an article that I've seen on usnews.com in September of 2023. Cleveland ranked as the third poorest city in the United States with a median household income of... $35,562. Percent of residents with household income lower than $25,000 is 36.3%. That was as of 2023. This is from worldpopulationreview.com this year. Poverty in the United States is set by poverty threshold, which is a government set estimate of the point below which a household of a given size has a pre-tax income insufficient to meet minimum basic needs. They basically accumulated this list, 239 largest cities in the United States, with populations over 100,000. As of this year, Cleveland is the second poorest city in the United States. The Ooh. medium household income is $37,351. That was updated January 10th, 2024. The 2.6 billion that he just got on the back end, the 20%, falls around how much it would cost mm -hmm. to build a brand new stadium. So I doubled down on what I said before. I got a hard time with a billionaire owner coming to the mayor of the city of Cleveland, who grew up poor in the projects, by the way, saying, hey, I need your taxpayers to help me pay for this stadium when you got so much more pressing issues. Like, in a, in a nutshell, <coughs> if we keep it in a hundred, we a broke ass city, right? We a poor city. I just have a hard time with a billionaire coming to me saying, hey, I need you to pay for this. Now, on the flip side, I understand the pros and the cons. You know, like the the economical and political backfire it can have if the Browns do not play downtown. I talked to a, a former councilwoman who served as a councilwoman for over 15 years, and she flat out told me like it would be catastrophic if the Browns were to leave downtown, yeah. but the city doesn't have much leverage. The owners have all the leverage. The best thing we could do is try to find a way to meet in the middle, but they will have to heavily incentivize us. So like, what does that mean? You would have to invest in jobs in the community. You have to invest in development in the community. And so, like, if you want the city to help pay for it, you're going to have to make sure the city gets something on the back end. Because the saddest part about all of this, knowing that this is a poor city and we got to pay for it, how many people can really afford in the city of Cleveland to take a family of four to a Browns game on Sunday? They've really made it damn near unaffordable to do so. Ty, what do you think? 
I don't think he's wrong in any way. First of all, I want to start off by saying Jimmy Haslam, let somebody, let me borrow something. You know, I, I'm good for it. I mean, not that I'm good for it. <laughs> Technically, you don't even need it back. I, I ain't asking for a lot either. Just a couple dollars. You know, I'm a, I am an employee of yours. So, you know, you want to you know, throw me a little something, something. I appreciate it. But no, I think Earl is right. It is tough to ask. You know, how can you ask a poor city to help you build something when they already don't have it anyways? It's, it's so hard in the day-to-day -day life. Like, everybody is struggling. You know, and, and we get on this Instagram and Twitter and all these things, and you, you live the, people live these false worlds about how, how they got all this money. And in the re actuality of things, they, people don't got it like that. You know, people are struggling out there. So I think that it's impossible to ask them to cut some more money out of their check that they already get cut again to help you build a stadium. Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody wants a new stadium. Everybody would love to come to a dome stadium and, and you know, support and watch the Browns in, in that aspect. But if on the back end, if it's taken away from my family and it's taken away from me being able to save money to get out of my situation, then there's no way that I could do that, especially when you just made $13.65 billion and it costs you two of that to, to build a new stadium. So I think Earl is 100% right. Would I actually love a new stadium? Absolutely. But if you're going to take money out of people that is already struggling's pockets, there's no way that I could sign off on something like that. Yeah, I want to clarify. He didn't get a check for thirteen point six five billion. That's the lump sum they've been paid over. I guess this is seven years now. The first payment came in twenty seventeen, which was two point seven six billion for thirty eight percent of the company and change. Then in twenty twenty three, they got eight point two billion dollars for about forty two percent. This two point six billion dollar was the final twenty percent of the payment. So in totality, it comes to about thirteen point six five billion dollars. Great reporting in Cleveland dot com, by the way for finding all those and kind of putting it together in a digestible way. And I always assumed it'd be a 50-50 split. That's just because of how the precedent has been set, not just in the NFL, but in the NBA and Major League Baseball, in terms of how owners go about obtaining a new stadium, mm. right? It's always been a 50-50 split outside of LA with the Rams and Stan Kroenke, who just built his own stadium, purchased it, and financed it all by himself. Now, on the flip side, Kroenke gets all the benefits and 100% of the financial profits from that whole area because it's his. Mm -hmm. And I know if it's a 50-50 split, the city gets some sort of back-end help and, and jobs and all that. I also think in a perfect world, Haslam's going to move this stadium to Brook Park because he has more land to build developments, restaurants, bars, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I just have a hard time looking at a, a price tag of $13.65 billion and knowing that's in your investment portfolio somewhere, whether it's all him, whether it's dispersed out the family. What, what, I don't know exactly how it gets divvied up, but to know a stadium's gonna cost about two billion, give or take. Mm -hmm. And on top of your other businesses, you got 13.65 for this. How can you ask, to Earl's point, how can you ask one of the five poorest cities in America to help fund it when you already have it? Because I think the thing about the article that really stood out to me was the part about what they received on the back end. The last 20% of the payment made to the Haslam family was $2.6 billion. Jason sat here and said that it would cost around $2.2, $2.3 billion <coughs> to build a new stadium. And for me, I think Jimmy Haslam is a good owner. De depending on who you are, you might disagree with that. But in this city, you know, you got people who are still pissed off that you paid Deshaun Watson $230 million. And some of these same people who don't like that, it's the same people that you asking, hey, I need your tax money to pay for the stadium, yeah. right? And then we've seen you take a percentage of your money and you go invest in the Milwaukee Bucks, right? We've seen what you've done with the Columbus crew. All I'm saying is from the naked eye, as a local Clevelander, when we look out and we see you dishing out this money left and right, like you got it, it's almost like going to buy a new pair of J's and your car break down. So now all of a sudden you'd have bought all these J's and you'd have put them in our face. Now your car break down and you come <coughs> to us and say, hey, I need help getting my car fixed. And there's no denying he has the money now. Right. Like we have the financial statements to prove he has it. And first off, by the way, kudos to you, Jimmy. Like my life goal is to have something that's worth $13.65 billion Man, and yeah. I can sell it off. Like all jokes aside, that is literally the American dream. So he's, he's made it. And the thing with the stadium, if he does build it himself, let's say it does cost two point, let's just use a round number, $2.5 billion. Mm -hmm. In the long run, that's going to make back so much more money than what it even costs to put in. So if I'm Jimmy, like, and I have the money, this may be 
This may actually incentivize him to say, <coughs> appreciate the help from the city, but there's greener pastures in Brook Park and bigger financial outcomes for me if I pay for it myself. And it may take longer to reap those benefits and see that return on investment, but this signals to me that this is probably not going to stay downtown. I, no, I don't think it is. Uh, yeah, me neither. I, I yeah. don't think it is either. And it sucks. I think it should But like downtown. if I'm the mayor, it's like, man, what incentives you got for my people? Okay, yeah. you, you, you want to, like, let's have a real unemotional conversation, right? Because my take, there's some facts in it, but I'm emotionally driven off this. Like I said, like he's from the Mount Pleasant Projects. Mm -hmm. Our mayor is 36 years old from the Mount Pleasant Projects. And you got a billionaire in his group walking into your office saying, hey, I need your help paying for this. Bib ain't never seen a million, billion dollars in his life. You feel what I'm saying? So like just from a basic human man to man standpoint, man, I got a hard time even having that conversation. But you know what? It ain't about me. It ain't about how I grew up. It's about the city of Cleveland. And yeah, it would be economically catastrophic, politically catastrophic if they was to leave here. But we don't have much leverage, right? We are limited in the space downtown Cleveland that we can even put a new stadium. And even if we found a place, where the hell the Browns don't play at until it's built? And then furthermore, like Jimmy. Oh, I know a place. <laughs> I'm interested to know that, but it's like. Columbus? <laughs> but it's like furthermore, like. It works. <laughs> what, what incentives do you have <laughs> yeah. for the city of Cleveland? Like how many jobs are you going to create? How can you assist the city that's a struggling city? If you, if you claim on a long-term investment in the city of Cleveland, well, how can you get us off that top five poverty list, right? Like, how can you help us? And so, like, this, if, if we're going to have a real conversation about us putting our money towards it, then, like, yeah, but it should, be in, so it should definitely be some incentive there. There has to be a give and take on both yeah. sides, not just from the Haslam's, but from the city. If they are going to contribute to this, what, what's on the back end for them as well? So, yeah. right. I just feel like it, it won't be 50-50. That, that's just no way, especially knowing that price tag. Um, I think maybe if it was like a, if you put two, maybe we could come up with 500 million. Like, all right, maybe, you know, you could look at it like that because Jason was talking about maybe doing it out of gambling, doing it out of the marijuana and stuff like that. All right, that's that's cool. That's a that's a decent way to do it. But if you're talking about you come up with 1.25 billion and we come up with one, that, 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 no, that, we that, can't do that. There's no way. That's, there's no way that that's going to happen. It's so. just a tough tax to put on, and not, not necessarily a tax, but just a tough ask for a city as Earl pointed out, is not Be financially stable. Because, right to now. his point, you come up with 1.5. If I'm a police officer or a firefighter or a firefighter or an EMS worker in the city, I'm going to look at you like you lost your damn mind if, if I'm going to see you get that type of money away. If I'm a teacher, yeah, you a, for, teacher a teacher for yeah. the Cleveland Public School System, you finna give 1.5 million to who? And, and, and we can't even get kids to, to graduate at a 50% clip? Are you kidding me right now? Yeah. Like, th those are the type of conversations, again, this is, a, this is a moral thing, but when it comes to dollars and cents, morality tends to go out the window, right? We know that. It's just, it's just unfortunate. I do think this thing is going to end up in, in Brook Park. It is. I, th it I think so. I think the it's more and more that here. comes out, the more and more my gut feeling, and, and I wish and I hope it stays downtown. I think Cleveland as a city is much better with the Browns playing downtown. I just think the reality of the situation, when you look at the financial benefits and the 100% ownership of the entire property potential for Haslam, uh, it's looking more and more like we could be dealing with the Brook Park Browns than the downtown Cleveland Browns in 2028, 2029, whenever that new stadium opens, which I can't even fathom. Like, they still are Cleveland, yeah. bro. No, they're not going to be called the yeah, Brook Park but, Browns. But, but, no, but, people but you who know are people pissed, are going to call them. Yeah. People who are pissed off, they will be calling them the Brooklyn yeah. Browns, the Brook Park Browns, yeah. like the, the, the Ford Plant Browns, the whole nine. So. It's going to happen. All right.